Mm -hmm. You also see situations like chronic and long-term care that are not covered, and these that, so those need to be covered. You'll often hit, and the example would be that you'll hit annual or lifetime maximums on a condition. I met actually um, a representative from the Seacoast who talked to me about, um, uh, I don't even know whether she was a supporter, but I just happened to run into her in the street. We were talking about health care, and she said her father had a heart condition. Very healthy man, but uh, only, his only problem was he had a heart condition. Uh, he uh, went to the doctor one time, was told uh, that, his, um, uh, that his, he'd met, met the maximum for that condition. He didn't die in that treatment. He, he didn't, and he didn't, but he didn't tell his children either, because he was proud. He didn't tell his children. He went home. He did die at the next incident, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what happens when we have these these maximums that don't the, these chronic you know, chronic conditions where you're going to require and you see it all the time. You hit the, you hit the maximum on something, and, and so get you you get rid of those kinds of uh, prohibitions. Yeah, I, I've got a I've got a husband that has um, adult onset diabetes. Right. And, you know, we, we have to pay. We, we're paying for everything. Yeah. So, the, the, nothing, so, so th this takes care of all. The, and, and it's really important for it to be comprehensive because when you think about the kinds of what happens in hospitals right now is they have people who have insurance coverage or are able to pay. Those payments are made and everything works smoothly. And then they have people who can't pay. So what do they do with those costs? Mm -hmm. They move them around. They do cost shifting. I'm not joking when I tell you that one of the cost shifting things that happened at my hospital, the University of North Carolina Hospital, a really reputable hospital, $50 bottles of water. $50 to get a little bottle of water. And the reason was they were just cost shifting. They needed to, they needed to make up for the fact that they serve a lot of people unable to pay. And so they just shift the cost. So if you don't, it, you know, if, if you if you're not covering everything, you still have this cost shifting game going on. So you still have the price of health insurance artificially inflated to cover people who aren't covered. So if you t you reduce the cost for everybody by making certain you have complete coverage, so you not don't have these ridiculous uh, uh, jumps in. So you you do what John does all of those things. Um, there are regional pools. Everybody, you know, if you uh, some people say you know, I, I I really like single payer. The truth of the matter is um, uh, that John has a single-payer option for people in a sense. If you want a government policy, <coughs> one of the insurers that will be available to you in whatever region of the country you're in, uh, you could say, you know, I like my Blue Cross Shield card, I like my United Healthcare card, whatever. But, or you know what? I think I want to take a, a take uh, the, the Medicare Plus um, program as uh, as, the, as my provider, and you can choose that. And if all of the American public chooses that, then we have single provider. Do I think that's going to happen on day one? I do not. I think over time, more people will gravitate towards it because private insurers have 30 to 40 percent overhead. The federal government has 3 to 4 percent overhead. So the chances are that your that your policy, which will be at a fixed price point, this universal policy, that you'll be at better services where the overhead is lower because they're going to have more money to spend on your services. So you expect to get better services there. But if you, but I don't expect everyone to go there. Honestly, if I was in the middle of chemotherapy, would I switch? Probably not. I say, no, I kind of like the security of knowing that this is a system working for me and I don't want to make a switch. But maybe after I finished chemotherapy and I saw that my neighbor had selected this and they were getting good, you know, I was talked to them and they were getting really uh, comprehensive, uh, uh, more comprehensive services even than I was. That, that, you know, that if they wanted a room with flowers, they could have it, you know, or a, a room with a flat screen TV in the hospital, whatever it was, you know, whatever the little extras are that you can, you can they were getting that, I might choose then to switch. So I expect actually over time to see that a, a gravitation. I could be wrong, but I would expect to see that kind of gravitation. And when and and then you know the people who stopped us from getting universal health care the last time, Harry and Louise, you remember them? And they came and sat. They pretended to be our neighbors. They looked like our neighbors. I remember their kitchen. I remember their really comfortable looking sofa and how they sit there and watch the TV and rail at it and how they what universal health care was going to mean to them. And they looked like our neighbors, but they were never sitting at our table. For dinner, because when they when when they went to go sit at the table, they sat at the HMO corporate board table because that's who they worked for. Not they were not our neighbors, uh, and uh, and we did a very bad job last time of fighting them. Is you know the way the way the universal health care plan was promoted. Basically, uh, President Clinton gave a uh, a speech to the joint session of Cong Congress, and then let it go. You know they uh, they did not they did not fight fire with fire. John will fight fire with fire. We can expect them to fight again.
they're, you know, they're not, they don't want a government insurer in there competing with them with that low overhead. Mm -hmm. They do not want that process, so they're going to be fighting again. But you, we're going to need to fight back, and, and, and John will do that to make certain that we get the health care that we deserve. So what happens, uh, in, in your particular question, what happens about, uh, uh, about making certain, about people making their own <coughs> health care choices? Uh, acupuncture, um, other alternatives. I have to say, I, I, you know, I went to, I went to, uh, uh, I, I had, uh, I, I'm very bad at doing the things I'm not supposed to do, so I'm not supposed to move furniture, but I did it anyway, <laughs> and, uh, and and did something to my back, and I, so I, I got an appointment with the head of the physical therapy uh, a department at UNC, thinking, you know, that's about as good as I'm going to get, right? Turns out he's an acupuncturist, you know, <laughs> and so this is not, this is no longer alternative therapy. The guy's head of the physical <laughs> no, therapy. No. And, he, and, and honestly, oh my goodness, what a difference it made. Absolutely. Um, but, Absolutely. but in any, in any case, uh, what your doctor decides, and if your doctor just, you know, says acupuncture, if your doctor says, um, you know, gives any kind of a treat, suggests any kind of a treatment, in fact, suggests even alternative um, treatments, that, you know, everybody will have a medical home, in a sense. So everybody will have a doctor who's their home, but they can choose then to, to go out in different directions, as we all will. Well, that, that home's not going to provide all services, but it will be sort of essential. And as, as we get older and our conditions become more complex, having that medical home is going to make a lot of difference uh, so to will us. So will it be covered? Yes. Acupuncture, you're y saying that? Yes, that? acupuncture would be covered. As if there, there'd be no reason why acupuncture would... If, you, if your doctor said it, this is, this, is where the, this is where the patient's Bill of Rights part comes in okay. into effect. This is why the interaction kind of these two that's really important. John does require that, that this is mandatory. We want to make certain that we are, uh, in, that we're taking the preventive steps we need to take. Um, and you're talking about vaccinations and things like this, mammograms and other kinds of diagnostic testings, education that we need uh, for, for truly preventive, uh, uh, effective preventive care. It's required that they provide these things. Um, it, but. Uh, Christian scientists, you're not going to jail Christian scientists because they didn't get treat the treatment that that uh, that the government um, that, that they didn't show up for their mammogram or whatever. Or they didn't, that, but but it's required that these things be provided. Um, and honestly, you, you asked a question which is very complex. And I, yes, I, I, I know. <laughs> but but I, but I want to be completely honest with you. Um, and, I, I've not heard John answer this question directly. But when you uh, although everything I've said so far, I know to be his position. When you talked about what you do about children, now, uh, uh, and, and you said their cancer treatment and whether they get chemotherapy or some other alternative, there are legitimate alternative therapies. Mm -hmm. I remember getting a letter from a woman who said that she tried, you know, basically everything. She said, if someone had told me to hold a chicken over my head, mm -hmm. I would have done that, mm -hmm. you know. But the truth is, if the way we, you, the way, if you, if you had a child with cancer and you said, my chosen therapy is holding a chicken over their head, I think maybe somebody needs to come tap you on the shoulder oh, and say, yeah, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so I, I don't want to. I don't want to suggest that that's an o completely open door. Right. I think we do have an obligation to to uh, to make certain that people are uh, because at some point it becomes almost abusive. You know, so I don't want to make. I don't want to make a suggestion to you that mm -hmm. that John has no limits on what what your decision you're making is with respect to your children because. Because we can't beat our children, even if we think we can't feed them water until they until they pass out. You know, there, there are activities that are you know, that are impermissible.